Our last Reptile Room tour was three years ago, and I've been busy making this Reptile Room the coolest one on YouTube, and I can't wait to show you. My name's Adam, these are all my reptiles. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. but what I'm excited to show you right now is what's behind the camera and all the shoots that you never get to see. These animals are really cool. And what I'm talking about are some really cool animals that, well, you get to never see. And that's just because the camera is here facing this way. So first I wanna talk about some crested geckos. Now we've got baby crested geckos galore. We're selling them. If you're in Canada only, please message me. I can't ship them across the US. But we've got micro habitats for the micro geckos that are gonna be finding new homes next week. So these are literally micro, micro eight by eight by 12 or something like that. Anyway, they're only in here for the first three or four weeks of their life, maybe a little bit longer, up to two months, and then we start to sell them after that once they're eating rapashi, gaining size really, really well. And then right beside that, we've got Baby Angel. Oh man, I love this snake. Baby Angel, Angel Baby. Either way, this is a cool snake, and that's because rhinoceros rat snakes, rhino rats, it's an arboreal snake that also loves water. Now you're gonna notice in this enclosure, it doesn't really have a lot of space. It's because it's a baby, but We've got enclosures that are bigger, that have bigger rhino rats, and eventually they're getting a 36, 36, 18 foot deep, or inch deep rather, that'd be a really big enclosure. Water area, it's got places, it's gonna be amazing. Thanks ZooMed for sending it to me, I promise I'm making the video. If you wanna see it, let me know in the comment section below. Right beside it, we've got an empty enclosure, so we just can move on to the other side of the room. Before I show you the meat and potatoes of the other side of the room here with all the glass, we've got one that just doesn't really fit on that side of the shelf. It's one of the crested geckos that I actually kept. We're talking about a 12 by 12 by 18 inch tall. He's a tiger morph. And this is one of the enclosures where it's a little, it needs a little bit sprucing up. It even says fix sticks and tidy up. So we're gonna be doing that next week. I wanna show you a reptile room, the way it looks when I walk in here, not me getting it ready for the camera for nine hours, which is, normally what you see. And there's nothing wrong with doing that, but this is like, you like me because I'm an idiot who rambles and doesn't cut stuff out. So let's move on to the rest of the room. Chihuahua geckos are underrated geckos from New Caledonia. And we've got several for sale. The one that I'm not sure if it's a keeper or not, we've got Ronald and this one here. So as they get older, you're gonna want something that's maybe 24 inches tall, 18 inches. This one's 12, 12, 18 inches tall. He's got lots of room to hide within those rock crevices which I really like. Now let's just move on, let's keep this going here. We're talking about Noodle Boy. So Noodle Boy is another rhinoceros rat snake. There's a total of three of them. This guy's in a bigger enclosure. So this is the same size as Ronald's enclosure, so it's all quite a bit bigger than what you saw for Angel Baby there. So we're gonna show you another one in a sec, but first come on with me, and I'm gonna show you the first of the bigger enclosures. We're talking 18, 18, 18. This is a cube enclosure, and these are dart frogs, Santa Isabel dart frogs. Now this is a breeding group. So we've got 2.2. That means two males, two females, and then who knows how many babies and tadpoles. Because what we've got in here is we have a waterfall with a basin of water, RO water, always use reverse osmosis water or uh, distilled water anyway. And then we've got a bunch of plants in here. It's on a misting system. So they all go off at the same time. The dad frog is going to get the eggs or the, sorry, what I should say is the mother frog lays the eggs and then the eggs hatch into tadpoles. The dad goes up, puts the tadpoles on his back, puts them in the water. They morph out to froglets. Wham, bam, bothers your uncle. That's how you get baby Santa Isabella frogs. They're the ones that chirp in all the videos, by the way. But I got cooler dart frogs to show you. These ones here are Dendrobates tinctorius iopoc. Thanks, Daffy's Reptiles, for giving me the tadpoles that turned into these little froglets over a year ago. They're slow to grow, but this one here is a amazing enclosure that has moss and plants. There's a whole video up here about fruit flies and dart frogs if you wanna watch anything like that, but I'm not done with dart frogs just yet. I will shut up about them eventually, but we've got, I think, my favorite enclosure right here, and this is the ZooMed 18, 18, 18 with a glass lid, and you're gonna notice it is way better growing because of that glass lid. So all of these are gonna get glass lids. It keeps the humidity way, way better. 
This one doesn't have a waterfall or anything, but I do think it's planted a little bit more aesthetically. And if you really look in and you're looking at it so you can't see anything else, it looks like a slice of the jungle. I've been around the world. This is what Costa Rica looks like when you look into a jungle. Of course, these are Dendrobates leucamella, so they're not from Costa Rica, but they are from Central South America. Guyana actually is where they're from. And let me tell you, these guys are my favorite. I have a tattoo of a leucamella. Everybody knows the bumblebee dart frogs. And we have a four point, sorry, 2.2, .2, so four frogs in here in this enclosure, which is uh, maybe the piece de resistance of the entire rack. Pointy is our oldest rhino rat snake. If you couldn't tell, I love rhino rats and he's about ready for that enclosure, which is almost done by the way. So like you don't have to let me know if you wanna watch the video, I'm still gonna make it for you. But either way, this guy here is a pig when it comes to food and right beside him, if we're gonna keep with the same size enclosures, another 12, 12, 18 and this one here, oh boy, let me tell you, Anoles come in all shapes and sizes. This is a red-throated anole. So you're gonna say, oh, well, Adam, I've seen Cuban false chameleons. Clint talks about them, Emily, no. This is not technically a Cuban false chameleon. It's a red-throated anole, which has not been formally described. So therefore, I don't even have a true Latin name for you. Same genus, different species. Now this guy here, amazing. He's got, well, he had a mate. These guys breed very rough. And unfortunately, she is no longer with us because of this gentleman here. But this is another individual that's gonna go into one of the larger enclosures once we do a little upgrade that I'm gonna tell you about in a minute. And of course, just to round out the top of the rack here, we're gonna kind of zigzag back and forth. This guy is a white tree frog. And by this guy, I mean these guys slash ladies. There's definitely boys in here, four, four frogs, and some of them are boys, because let me tell you, they are loud. Now, if you don't know, White's tree frogs are some of the biggest tree frogs in the world. They're from Australia. Australian tree frogs, dumpy tree frogs, White's tree frogs, whatever you want to call them. And they're in an enclosure that's two feet deep. What you're going to notice is that all of these are on the same sort of lighting path. So if I tell my device, say the magic words, you know what they are, and say, turn off the reptile room, everything shuts off. These guys are in our Arcadia lights. One outlet for all of these lights that zigzag. So let's just start in the middle row right here with the oldest reptile in my whole collection. Before we move on, I, I did get pooed on. You'll see it in a little bit. So I had to change my shirt, which is apropos because today's sponsor is Husbandry Pro. And if you're wondering, how does this guy keep track of all of his animals? Well, Husbandry Pro makes it really, really easy. You can track all of your animals. You can track their sheds, their poops, all sorts of different events. And of course it gives you push notifications too. That's my favorite part. If you sign up for Husbandry Pro, you log all your animals and then you set it up. So my berms need to get fed once a month, the big one, once every six weeks. I get a notification on my phone in the morning. It lets me know, hey, it's the day you gotta thaw out a rodent. Today is the day they get fed. Doesn't matter if you're a big breeder or someone like me who has a big collection or even a small collection. If you only have five animals, well, guess what? It's free for everybody else, free for 30 days. Just use my link in the description below. And the reason I love it so much is it's constantly evolving. It's run by real people. When I email Husbandry Pro, they email me back and whatever I have a problem with gets fixed. If everybody's customer service was like this, we would have flying cars by now. It's absolutely unbelievable, bar none, the best customer support I've ever dealt with. Plus, if you're a vendor, they have tools for you. If you wanna share things like breeding records, you can do that right from the app. You can transfer your animal to somebody else. So if you sell at an expo or through Morph Market, which it integrates with, by the way, you can just transfer if that person also uses Husbandry Pro. It's honestly the best app for keeping reptiles. I, I can't think of anyone that's even close. I'm proudly sponsored by Husbandry Pro. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this entire room tour. We'll go back to the uh, old shirt, do a couple more reptiles and then the poo incident, and then we'll get on to really cool stuff like berms. So Cheech, I actually got before I got Flutie, which is my 13 year old Pomeranian. So this guy is very old, but the nice thing is it's a testament. So Cheech is a 2010, which means that he's 13, probably, probably a 2009, honestly. So he's 13 or 14 years old, and that's okay because they're gonna last 20 plus years. And this is a testament to show you leopard geckos when cared for properly last a while. Now I'm not saying that you have to keep your leopard gecko in an enclosure that is three foot by 18 by a foot tall, but I do love giving the 50 gallons of space. It's bioactive, it has a cleanup crew. He's got these humid hides underneath these cork logs. I love this enclosure. I love Cheech, he's the man, but something that is maybe a little bit more unique than Cheech, 
something that I probably haven't showed you too much on this channel because they're newer to the channel, are red-eye crocodile skinks. Now I'm not gonna say too much because I wanna make a whole video. I was very lucky that Dion from Antiliatus, who buys all of them in Canada, he just has a spidey sense, he knows when they go on sale, allowed me to buy one of these amazing creatures at an expo. Another one I've got a tattoo of, I love these guys, very unique, gonna grow up, gonna do tons of videos about them, but there are cooler skinks, and before I show you those, I wanna talk to you about the Tagu. I know you know Mushu, if you've been following the channel for a while. I got Mushu, who is an Argentine black and white Tagu. She should be this big, by this time, because she is a 2021 animal. She's been around for two and a half, almost three years, but she keeps going into brumation. She's got this cool enclosure that's obviously too small for a tegu, but she's only this big. She's only this big, so eventually we're gonna take her from here and put her into an eight foot enclosure when she's ready, but for now, she's sleeping. So I'm just gonna show you a video from another day. Either way, UVB, misting system, Bing, bang, boom, Bob's your uncle. Let's talk about freaking Schneider skinks. Schneider skinks are the most underrated skink, more underrated than emerald tree skinks. Sorry, Clint. I'm just telling you, these might not be an arboreal green lizard, but these guys are out all the time. Not right now, because I'm making a video, so they wanna make a liar out of me. But either way, they can fit in an enclosure, three foot, 18, one foot tall, beautiful animals. I've got a pair in here. Can't figure out how to breed them, but they get along just great. They don't fight over food. They like it hot. They have a basking lamp. They have a UVB. These guys are the cat's pajamas. But the lower you go in the room on the rack, the cooler the temperature stays. And that means that you can keep tree frogs. Not any tree frog, red-eye tree frogs. Are you noticing all the cool animals I'm super excited about I have freaking tattoos of? Either way, these guys here, it's a 2.2, which means it's two breeding pairs. They're two different localities. So a couple of them are lighter, and then the other pair is darker. I'm not sure which is from which, but I know for sure the ones from Costa Rica are dark. We got to find those ones. It's 16 seconds off stepping a plane, it feels like. This one is planted, bioactive, has a beautiful allocasia that needs to be changed out because it's too big for the enclosure, but too pretty to cut down. It's got moss, it's got a water bowl, the whole kit and caboodle. I'm gonna make a rain chamber eventually to try to breed these guys. But for now, I enjoy listening to them with their subtle croaks and subtle calls, and then watching them kind of float around in the morning and at nighttime as well. But right beside that, we've got crested geckos. 18 inch, 18 inch, 24 inch tall. There's three of them. So there's two females and one male. So it's a breeding group and they breed great. They stay together all year round. I've had the two together since 2016. No fighting, no issues, no bruising or anything like that. They eat out of bowls. There's several bowls, there's several of them anyway, of the Rapashi. They get sprayed down with a misting system for hydration. These are happy and healthy geckos. Chihuahua geckos right beside them, how apropos. Another species right from New Caledonia. So they like it a little bit cooler. And at this part in the room, the hottest it's gonna get during the day is somewhere around 78, up to 82 maybe. But then closer to the bottom of the ground, it stays in the mid 70s. So that's why I like this enclosure. It's got two misting heads. It's got a custom background. It's the first one I ever made. And just overall, Chihuahua geckos, in my opinion, very underrated. Becky and Bob, boy oh boy, have they made a lot of babies. If you're in Canada, message me. I wanna sell you some Chihuahua geckos. And last but not least, on these metal shelves, which by the way, I know you're gonna ask, one of them is a Mastercraft shelf, which you can buy at Canadian Tire. I live in Canada, if you didn't know. The other one's a Husky shelf. You can buy them at Home Depot. I prefer the Husky shelf. That's what I recommend. Either way, back at the bottom here, we've got a five foot enclosure. So five foot, two foot, and I think it's about two foot tall. And this is my Aki Susan. I recommend that Aki monitors have a little bit bigger enclosures and deeper than what I have right here. The reason that she doesn't have an enclosure as deep, she has no claw, she basically has no fingers left. I've got her like this. It's something that does happen to Aki's if they're not cared for properly. Monkey tail skinks are the biggest skinks in the world and I'm lucky to have a pair of them. I've got them in this four foot by four foot by two foot deep enclosure. Now these guys are in the perfect size enclosure if you ask me. I'm waiting on an enclosure that's a little bit taller to put them in so that I can put one of the cool animals over here in this enclosure. But either way, it's just got coconut core on the bottom. We've got lots of sticks and stuff that I literally picked up from a park after a windstorm. And these animals have prehensile tails. That's why they're called monkey tail skinks or prehensile tail skinks. Solomon Island, skate, they're from Solomon Islands. Anyway, there's a bunch of different names. They eat nothing but vegetation, which I love. 
Maybe they might eat a little bit of protein and a bug here or there if it's on the leaf. But in general, they're herbivores, huge wild claws that when you bring them out, you gotta wear gloves, otherwise they will make you bleed. Not because they're trying to, they're just big and powerful and strong and they're arboreal and you're a tree. So these guys, I'm super excited to have a bucket list species for basically every reptile keeper. And I'm so excited I get to show them to you on the channel. You guys know who this is. This is Diamond, the star of the channel. If you've watched the channel for any length, he's probably in 90% of the videos. The co-host, and he lives in this four by two by two enclosure from Cages. Cages Custom Enclosures, thanks for sending me this, appreciate it. It has a UVB at the top, it's got the basking spot, it's got the basking light above the basking spot, cork tubes, it's got a, some, there's a whole video right here if you wanna see more. But either way, Diamond is the star of the channel. I love this guy, he's the best. Now you might notice in some of the videos that this looks different all the time. It's because Diamond hides in those logs and therefore I have to move them around. So don't worry, if you see one fall in the background, it's Diamond's enclosure, he's on my shoulder, he's safe. No bearded dragons were harmed in the making of this beautiful, wonderful film that Diamond is the star of. Let's move on to something a little bit rarer that you probably don't own. Fiji banded iguanas are something that if you live in the US, you don't own. You just don't, they're illegal, we talk about them all the time. This is, in my opinion, the best iguana that you could possibly own. This is by far the coolest looking lizard that I've ever touched. And in my opinion, I just think the most majestic, magical creature I've ever got to interact with that doesn't have venom glands, right? I mean, I've interacted with cobras, but either way, in captivity, I think that Fiji banded iguanas are amazing, much smaller than their counterparts, which are huge, giant green iguanas that sometimes have attitudes. These guys won't bite you, they won't tail whip you, they're herbivores, they will go after crickets if one of them gets in their enclosure. Either way, Fiji banded iguana, Frankie, is the guy who's gonna be going into the monkey tail skink enclosure, and that's why I wanna move the monkey tails out. I wanna give Frankie more room than what he's in right now, because they are semi-arboreal lizards, so I want him to have more height. He's gonna go into a four foot, he's in a two foot now. We're gonna fix that. But before we do anything else, let's talk about some more skinks. This is Erwin the Blue Tongue Skink. I've actually got two of these. This guy likes it a little bit more humid, so he's in a more humid enclosure. A four by two by 16 inch tall PVC enclosure. This is a Blue Tongue Skink, an Indonesian Blue Tongue Skink. And we've also got a Northern who is Steve. So we'll cover them both at the same time. This is a larger individual. He's got that really beautiful red belly and throat area, big blue tongue. And then when we talk about Steve, who's a Northern, he's from Australia, same enclosure, but we keep it quite a bit drier. There's ways that we do that, quite a few ways. And of course, we don't have the same color blue on their tongue. The Northerns generally have much bluer tongues. I don't know why, if it's necessary, but I just think that it's very cool that this is a darker animal with a darker tongue. And then we've got Steve the Northern, who is a lighter animal, and he's got a much more vibrant blue tongue. But either way, I love having one of each. They're different, the diets are the same, care is basically the same, but the way they look and the way they act is very different and I'm very lucky to have these skanks. Now moving on, I did get pooped on, which is why. So we're gonna leave the animal back in its cage. But we're talking about Franny. Oh, and by the way, the room does look different. I had to film this another day because the poop incident and anyway, so. If you wanna see a room tour, it looks way different now. There's a big thing. We could do another one, but either way, the point is, of the room, we've got Franny, which is a boa constrictor emperor. I love this girl. She's freaking huge. Absolute beauty. She has a enclosure that is eight foot long by three feet high by four feet deep. This thing is freaking huge. That's 718 gallons, if you like to measure things in gallons. 710 gallon aquariums, basically and I got her in a 10 gallon aquarium. So she has 700 times the room that she had before, which is kind of great. Wait, no, 70 times. 70, 70, math is hard. Either way, she's great. She has a climbing apparatus that I kind of made out of scrap two by fours. It's totally fine. I know what wood it's made of, it's fine. She has a humidity system. It is hooked up to a misting system. She's using radiant heat panels to keep her warm and just generally an amazing animal. Now let's move on right to the left and we've got Kratos. So this is my other eight foot by three foot tall by four foot deep enclosure. So same enclosure, basically the same with a little bit different furnishing. This is my biggest animal. Kratos is something like 13, 14, 15 feet, something like that. Big, big boy, I love him. Probably my favorite snake to handle just cause he's so chill. He's so cool, so calm, gives you a big hug. He's like, He's like a golden retriever, okay? You guys know I've had some you know, golden retrievers in my life and this is what this 
animal is basically. Happy all the time, a little bit goofy, kind of silly, kind of clumsy, and he's only eight years old. So he's got a long time to go. And then we'll go right above to his mate. Now this is a smaller enclosure. It is eight foot long, but it's only 16 inches high and two feet deep, which in my opinion is fine for the nine foot animal that she is. So a smaller berm, this is thunder. We'll get to lightning in a sec. I do have a thunder and lightning. Kratos and this girl made a bunch of babies, not featured in this room tour because they're over in the other room with the racks. Do you wanna see the other room? I can make a room tour if you want. It looks totally different than the last one too. Either way, if you're in Canada and you're looking for baby berms, hypos, I think I have one normal left, albinos and pearls, I have them for you. Can't ship to the US, it's illegal. But if you're in Canada, shoot me a message. And then right above her is actually the one baby that I think I might be keeping. This is Charmeleon. She's a little bit spicy. I'm totally not sure if I'm gonna keep her. Do I really need more Burmese pipe? Like probably not. So we'll see. But she's in a four foot by two foot by 16 inch enclosure. She's doing absolutely fantastic. I'm super lucky to have this animal. And one that I produce. It's the very first one that popped out of the egg, which is why I kept her. Sentimental value. And moving on right next to her, we've got a smaller albino blood boa constrictor, BCI, peaches. So this animal is a little bit young. Um, she is for sale. So if you're in Canada, we can work out a deal maybe. I uh, brought her to the last expo and she didn't move, but she's definitely for sale. Don't really need her. She's beautiful, but I'm not breeding boas, so it doesn't really make sense. Would make a great pet for somebody. And then someone I am keeping right beside is Jimmy. So Jimmy's gonna get a full upgrade to a full 48 inch enclosure, right? Which is what I think Spotted Python should be in. But right now he's still chilling. He's not super big. You know, he's a great guy, not very cantankerous, eats really well, easy to handle. And in my opinion, Spotted Pythons, which are a member of Antaresia, the smallest genus of Python in the world, are probably one of the coolest pythons that nobody knows about. And in my opinion, probably one of the best pets in the world when it comes to reptiles, just nobody knows about them. And then right above is probably, I, I don't know, they're all my favorite snake it seems like, but this is Thunder. This is the Burmese python that started it all for me. I got her when she was a little tiny baby. She was super small, came to me in a sandwich container and look at her now. She's probably seven foot. She's a big, big girl. She's only gonna grow more. She's about three years old. And I think that albino Burmese pythons might be my favorite looking snakes to actually touch, handle and interact with because they're interesting to look at. They're big, as long as you're responsible, they're not dangerous, especially not at this size, seven foot and they eat really well. So I think berms are, they hold a special place in my heart. I absolutely love them. I'm so lucky to have her and she's gonna get a big upgrade as well. I actually have an enclosure that's due to arrive tomorrow as of recording this video, that's eight foot and she's gonna get that enclosure. So she's getting an eight foot enclosure maybe this weekend or next week, but obviously a seven foot Python in a four foot enclosure, in my opinion, is too small. And there you go. That is the reptile room tour. That is what I have in my collection. I wanna show you more. The other room now, so I don't know if you've noticed, this is where all the glass was. And then now we've got that big enclosure over there. And this room is totally different. So if you wanna see a new reptile room tour, maybe we can do one in January or February. If you wanna see the other room with the racks and the glass and Doug's in there and the whole thing, reticulated pythons, let me know. I'd love for you to see that. If you want me to make it, I will. As always, thank you for hitting like and subscribe. Thank you so much for the Patreon supporters for, well, doing your thing. You get discounts on merch, videos early, one-on-ones, all that, and more for as little as $1 a month. And that's it. So new videos on Mondays and Thursdays. That means I'll see you in the next one.